What's up everybody, it's another episode of Knock Stiff Golf. Today we're gonna do a what's in the bag. I'm kind of a gearhead in the sense that I always think a new club's gonna make me play better, which is rarely the case. So I finally got some new clubs this year. So we're gonna go through those and see what other ones I plan on upgrading later this winter, I guess it is. So stay tuned and I hope you enjoy. So first things first, we're gonna start with the driver, which is usually my favorite club in the bag. I finally upgraded to the Callaway Rogue, and it's been pretty great for me. Uh, I had the TaylorMade M2 before that, and I just felt like I never hit it very well, and I just don't think it was really set up for me properly. But with the Rogue, I got fitted a bit more. The shaft is the uh, Project X Even Flow. It's a stiff, so uh, all my clubs will be using mid-size grips. Next up we got the three wood. It's a Callaway X2 Hot. I've had this for a few years now. Stiff shaft, mid-size grip says everything else. And this club I can absolutely smoke sometimes. Uh, it's a perfect club when I'm struggling off the tee. Except I just think that I could benefit from maybe upgrading this to maybe the Rogue three wood or, or even the Epic. Uh, I feel like there's a couple yards I'm missing uh, with the new technology and it could be very well not true. So that might be something I demo a little bit this winter and see how that goes. Next up is the hybrid. It's a Ping I-20 two iron loft. So it is 17 degrees and stiff shaft. And it's something I've used for the last few years. And when I hit this thing good, it will go usually around, I don't know, 225, 230, maybe a little bit more if I really connect with it. But it's usually a club that if the woods aren't working, that's when I'm gonna be hitting off the tee. Uh, and it's also one of the clubs that I might be looking at upgrading this winter as well. Next up we have the Iron Set. I am playing the Titleist AP3-718s, or technically the 718 AP3s. So these are stiff shafts. They have the True Temper AMT Black. And so I didn't get these shafts fitted for me, but I think they're okay. I came from hitting the Project X uh, Royal Precision 6.0s, and I think I really like those. The irons I had were the Callaway X Forged, and these clubs are much easier to hit, much more forgiving. They just don't have that same feel as a forged iron as everybody kind of already knows. So when you hit these pure, it actually doesn't feel like anything. But when you would hit a Forge Club here, you know, there's that, that almost cozy, soft feeling. Uh, it's very hard to describe now that I think about it, but I know the feeling and it is something I miss. So there's pros and cons. I think these clubs offer a ton more distance, mainly because they have such strong lofts on them, but I do miss the feeling of forged iron. So that's something I gotta consider here in the future. Next up we have the wedges. Uh, all my wedges are Callaway. I have a 52, 56, and a 60 degree. And the 52 is a Mac Daddy 3 S grind. Uh, I really don't know if I love it. It's The distance for it is odd for me. I seem to usually hit a gap wedge somewhere in the realm of 110, 115. And this one seems to just only go about 107. I don't know why that is. Maybe it's my contact. Maybe the loft is a little funny, but I don't know. Some reason I don't hit this one quite the same distance as I usually have hit other gap wedges. Uh, for my sand wedge, it's another Callaway. This one is an, kind of an older one, the Jaws X series. So that one kind of needs a little updating. Uh, it's 56. It, it's okay, but then my favorite club in the back probably is my Callaway Phil Mickelson Grind 60 degree. This club is insane. It's got the super high toe, and so you can lay the face open and just hit flop shots, 
whatever you want to do with it, it's pretty capable. And I set up to this club with usually so much confidence when I got 75 yards and in. Um, and then usually I'm let down by the result, but you know, whatever. But I set up to it with a lot of confidence. So it's a, it's a great club. I suggest everybody try that one out at least once because people always pick it up and say this thing looks huge and massive and it looks, uh, it, it just gives you a lot of confidence when you set up to it. So I enjoy that. Finally, we come to the last club in the bag, which should be my favorite, but let's call it second favorite because it's my putter. It's the Odyssey number seven tour so many times. It's, it's the it's the O Works Black 7S. And this thing is probably cut down to 33 inches or so. It's got the super stroke um, grip on it. 2.0 flat so is the grip. So it's a little different for me this year, but I really like it. My putting has just been kind of hit or miss this year and I really want to work on it this winter because that's an area that used to be just so solid for me and I think I started putting a little bit too much emphasis on my full swing and forgot the little things like making seven foot putts and those cost you a lot of strokes when you're missing those. So that's all through the bag. Now we can talk a few details about the bag. So I have a brand new Ping Hoofer. Uh, I think it's 2.0 or something like that. I used to have a Ping Hoofer bag years ago and I really enjoyed it and I use it so much I got holes in it from uh, very who knows what. But uh, I really enjoy this bag. Super light, easy to carry, very comfortable straps. It's got the coolest little Velcro, not Velcro, magnetic pocket on it that everybody opens and closes and they say, I wish my bag had that. It's got the attractive golf glove holder Velcro so I can just slap my glove on there between shots or after the round and let the glove air out. Uh, it's got plenty of pockets. It's got the built-in rain hood that is under the back um, padding, which is, I thought was a really ingenious design. So this bag has been great. Um, for me. In terms of balls, you'll probably see me playing uh, Vice Pro Pluses or Pro V1X or the Srixen Z Stars are pretty much what I play across the board. And then I, I like to throw in the Callaway Super Softs and stuff in there. I pretty much play whatever, but this next year I'm, I plan on putting in a big order of Vice and just playing those all season long. Get a little Knock Stiff logo on there, so I guess my friends can return them when they find them lost on the course. I don't know, save me some money. So that's the deal with the balls. Uh, in terms of gloves, I usually have Foot Joys in there and occasionally the Callaway came out with some really colorful gloves that I've enjoyed using. I have black, red, blue, and all sorts of different colors. They have a different feel to them than Cabretta leather. I'm not sure what they are, but they, I was told that they last forever and I just haven't seen that yet. So I might have to take a look online at some of the other companies that are coming out with some cool gloves. Also in my bag, I have my green apple uh, Crown Royal bag. This holds all my tees, my uh, ball mark fixers, uh, quarters, anything else that I might need on the course, tape. And basically I just can reach in there, grab what I need, and everybody thinks it's a nice little bag to have on the course. Rangefinder, I have uh, just a, a Callaway one that I got for Christmas one year from Costco of all places. It's your basic one, doesn't have any slope function, anything like that, but it gets the job done. It tells you how far from point A to point B, and it's tournament legal, so I never have to worry about that. And it wasn't that expensive, so you can spend easily 500 bucks on a rangefinder if you go top the line. And frankly, I haven't needed it, and I don't feel like I'm missing out on much. So keep that in mind when looking for rangefinders. There are some good options out there at a good price point. One thing I'm really upset about is I always have my birdie flask in my bag. Uh, it's a gold flask that says make it a double on it. And I always think make it a double bogey, which seems to happen more often than not, but I can't find it after my last round of the year. I don't know if I stuck it somewhere else, but uh, I really need to go looking for that because it's a special flask to me. And it's always important to have that, not because you have to drink on the course, but it's more of a a communal, it's more for 
when you're playing with friends or even strangers to kind of celebrate each other when you make good shots or make birdies, whatever it may be. And you don't have to drink a lot or anything like that, but when you get together and you celebrate somebody making a birdie, it kind of brings you closer together. And that's great to have when you're playing out with your friends because even though you might be playing against each other, it's fun to celebrate when somebody does well. So it's a nice little friendship thing to me and I always want to carry it around and it's something I think, whether it's alcohol or not, you should all have something similar to that. So it's up to you, but that's my opinion. So that kind of wraps it up for what's in the bag. There's a couple things I didn't touch on, like towels, which seem to always constantly change, bag tags, which I kind of want to use less and less of because they seem to just fall off eventually and alignment sticks. I always keep a couple alignment sticks in there to help me on the range and with whatever I'm practicing. So, hope you guys enjoyed that. It's just a peek into what I'm using this, at least that I used this past season, and maybe we'll have a couple upgrades. So, we'll call it my 2018 bag. So, thank you guys for tuning in. As always, like, subscribe, comment. Let me know what's in your bag. Is there a favorite club you have? Is it your lob wedge, your putter? I mean, most of the time it's your driver. So let me know and I look forward to seeing you guys next time. All right. Bye.